Hey, I'm Christy Glass and I'm here at the Blackberry Hill Farm, right? I'm here with Sabrina. She's hiding a little bit. It's hard to be comfortable on the camera, but there she is. And I found out about the Blackberry Hill Farm because I was looking at the Claremont vendors and it's a little, it's like a tiny fiber festival in the Hudson Valley. And I was reading up on the Blackberry Hill Farm and they have this, well, we'll talk about the fiber in a second, but they also have this experience where you can come and stay here. Like everyone's into this whole go to a farm and pretend to be a farmer for a day. And so you can come and stay here and you can interact with the animals and get like a farm to table meal, which I thought was really fascinating because I don't find that a lot with fiber farms. And um, so I'm learning all about this farm. So this is a four generation farm. Can you see it behind me? Is it only behind me or is it this way too? There's a little bit. There's a little bit in the back here. It, How it, many it, acres? It had gone out. Um, right now up here, uh, what we're on, we use probably like um, six or seven acres. Uh huh. And then we have another um, almost 30 acres Up where we do maple syrup. Oh my gosh. So there's ho those are your horses? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's these beautiful horses down there, which, oh my gosh, they are gorgeous horses. What kind of horses Halflingers. are they? Halflingers. What, halflinger? What does that mean, halflinger? They are a breed zoom in. from the halfling region of Eastria. The oh my goodness. Region. How did they get here? Well, they're bred a lot in Ohio, the Amish. Uh -huh. They're a small draft, and they were using <gasps> one of the World Wars to carry um, artillery and whatever over the Alps. And they're very hardy. Um, they're easy keepers. They have gentle dispositions. They're just really wonderful, sweet horses. And they're beautiful. The uh, shepherdess in charge, the shepherdess um, extraordinaire, is Andrea and her daughter Sabrina. They're both shepherdesses. Which isn't it so cool how many farms I find with women who are in charge? It is so cool. And at one point they've had like a hundred sheep and did you say thirty llama? We've had 30 like thirty or 30 llama. llama. Yeah. And it's really important to them that their sheep lit like are born here, they die here and she says it's really hard for them to sell the sheep. But what's exciting is when you come to Rhineback you're gonna be able to go to their booth and buy their yarn and it's the camelid, so the alpaca, the llama, the sheep, and the angora rabbits all spun together, hand spun, in this very special yarn. They are in a booth, to, I guess it's called house, like it's like an animal house 29. It's across, you'll hear the auctioneers are da 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 and like across from there, you'll see the animal like barns, and they're nine and 10. So you have to check them out, and we're gonna do a little tour of the farm. Right now, I'm so excited! We're going on a field trip. Here we go, we're at the farm. I wore my overalls and I, I brought my gardening boots because I've learned about farms. There's lots of poop. <laughs> Absolutely. That's one thing we never run out of. <laughs> fertilizer, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's actually, not poop, it's you'll, fertilizer. You see out there, there's uh, two big piles where <laughs> of poop. Yeah, we compost it and people come and get it for their gardens. That's awesome. Look, here's, look at this cute little sign they have. Isn't that cute? When people come to do their uh, farm experience, where do they stay? Or do they, they don't spend the night, they, it's they just come to, for the day. Yeah, it's just totally up to them. And we actually, my sister has a house that she does Airbnb. Oh, nice. Away, up the road, so. Nice, so you could do that and then you could come over to the farm. And tell me about your sheep, what kind of sheep do you have? We have a real blend. We have lots of Cormel mm -hmm. and some Romney. Our last two rams were both crosses of Cormo and Romney, so there's a little bit of everything out mm -hmm. there. And then we got some old girls that I couldn't even remember. Right. I've been uh, knitting with a Cormo blend lately, and I love it. Yeah. But you don't knit, right? Um, just for myself. Yeah, do you, do you have a preference of the fiber that you use? Um, not really. Like right now, I'm using one of our, one of our yarn, yarns as a blend. And, uh -huh. uh, I really love it. It's one of my favorite yarns. Look at all the sheep. They're like, Mama's here. Hi guys, you want to go out? We're going to let them out in the grass here. Cool. Look so at them all. They, they get a little bit scared with strangers. All right. Though. But at the same time, they want that grass. Yeah, well, let's see. Hi guys. Hi. It's okay. <laughs> and there are about 40. Hi guys. Hey everybody. 
It's so, hyster sheep are so hysterical. They all like look the same way, all together at the same time. I know, they really are. They're like a school of fish. Yep, exactly. Don't get scared. Most times, I mean, they're really flock oriented. Yeah. And, and I'm really, I'm really trying to Guys, I just want to take my picture with you, okay? Let's try it, ready? You seem friendly. You guys want to go to your grass? You excited about your grass? So these these guys are you got a lot of brown sheep. Yeah. Like a mix. We used to have it is funny, we go in you know, sometimes we have mostly white and sometimes it's all colored sheep. It depends on just who who's born. Exactly. So are these all the mamas? Um or you mix them up? Weathers. Mm -hmm. Weather is uh, basically gelded. Right. Ram. So up at the house, the sheep that you saw up there were rams. Yeah, because they have to be separated. Yes. Except for yeah. a certain time. Go out there and see if they uh, behave a little better. Since no, they were pretty good. They. Oh, okay. I got a good picture okay. with them. Good. Yeah, and um, we have sheep that are 15 years old. And wow. We have sheep that are two years old. We didn't have any lambs this year. Um, so did was that intentional that you yes yeah we we'd like to control how many sheep we have and because we don't sell them yeah because we don't sell them you know we don't want to have a hundred sheep yeah day, it's you know? because you would so yes. quickly because they're so cute they're so cute and do do many of them have multiples yeah 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 we had the last time we probably had an even amount of singles and <laughs> twins we've had triplets before. Oh, they're um, so cute. Look at them. They are the most school of fish sheep I've seen. <laughs> they um, they all have names. They do. Yeah. Can you tell them apart? Yes. You can? I can. Do you have a favorite? Um, there are some that I kind of call mine. There's, um, I can't point out. there's Rihanna, there's Pansy, there's Rainbow. Um, do you, but I love them all. Do you do a name? Like some people will name the babies. Yeah, tell me that. Tell okay, me about that so naming Rainbow, trick. Rainbow. Rainbow has, um, she had two ewe lambs, and she has Rihanna, those were Rihanna and Raina, then... So you do do the same letter to make it easier? Yeah, not always. Okay. Um, it also just depends, like my mother has a book with a list of names. Oh, okay. And sometimes be like, oh, let's use this name for, yeah. for this one. We had, um, a sheep named Lana. She had twins. And it was, they were born on the last day that Oprah's show was on. Uh huh. So one is Oprah and the other one is Coco. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And, uh. Oprah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then Oprah had a lamb. Wasn't a girl. So what are we going to name Oprah's lamb? I know, right. Stedman. Oh, perfect. <laughs> perfect. Oh my gosh, that's so great. So. All right, let's meet some more animals, yeah? Okay. Yeah. They're busy eating. I love this guy, though. This is Shine. Shine is so cute. I love She's her little sweet. white face. Shine. They might, they might be used to a little bit, but they're... Shy, but some of them are curious. They're very curious, and they're, you know, they, they do this anyway. They move around once they get into a field. They move around a bit. Yeah. Now they're more right, settled. They're gonna... Okay, you have to see these gorgeous horses. When are they going to figure out how to make fiber from horses? <laughs> Their hair would have to be tassels or something. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi, you beautiful horse. Hi. That's yeah, Ruby. Hey, Ruby. How are you? Yeah, I know. Let's wait until Belle gets out, and then I'm going to close it because we're going to go in and make a mess. Hey. Belle, honey, are you coming? Technically, they can pull a cart, too. Uh huh. Um, you haven't made them work that hard. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're so beautiful. I love the uh, contrast of their hair with their fur. I know, Isn't that pretty? Nice. Very beautiful. I could totally picture those in as little workhorses for the Amish because I've been in Amish country a couple times. I bet there's good yarn in Amish country. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm going to meet Blossom next and apparently she's going to try to eat my camera. So I don't even know what kind of animal she is. She's a llama. A llama. Hi, honey. I was like, she must be a goat if she's going to eat something that's not food. Hi. 
I see me. you. <gasps> She's like, Mom, is this okay? <sighs> oh, fine. Oh, fine. I see how it is. It's okay. I'm just taking your picture because you're so beautiful. That's right. Let me see that profile. <laughs> now let me see the other profile. There we go. Now let me see your hands, front and back. <laughs> That's what I have to do at my auditions. Really good, Blossom. Hey guys. Hey ladies. Oh, look, the, look at that rooster. Yeah. Look at him. <gasps> look at his feathers. He is, look at him. He is proud today. There's a couple chickens that escape by themselves and then I have two chickens and she's one of them. She was being picked on. Oh. So I took her out and she's kind of... And they're out that. all the time yeah. before gardens and then they stay in the big... They, they've got a really good big space over there. Yeah. Um, and then they, we let them back out like in another month. Oh. Huh. So she's, she's like hanging out with the rabbits. Yeah, <gasps> and there's another chicken that also is one. in rehab. She's... She's in rehab. Yeah. And hey. they, they live in the rabbit cages at night. And that's that's good. That works. Yeah. Look at these rabbit cages. So do they stay here year round? Yes, but in the winter time they're enclosed in plastic, and then we put. Blankets. Or they're really spoiled, and they go into the yes, greenhouse. Yes, some of the mm. ones out here go in the greenhouse. So their fur is not warm enough for the winter elements, because I would no, think they would is, be. No, but. <laughs> um, Angora. Yeah. Is a hair, not a not wool. Oh. As is llama. Mm -hmm. So it's not as. And it's. There, the core of each shaft is hollow, so it's more insulative. Angora rabbit, um, angora fiber is um, like supposedly 16 times warmer. Oh, interesting. Then that's why, like, if you try to wear a really heavy, bulky uh, camelid hair, uh, camelid sweater, or you know, it's great. 100% is great for hats, mittens, socks, whatever. But like a sweater, not only would it sag because it doesn't have the integrity. Yeah. But it's also going to be so warm yeah. that you couldn't wear it in the I've house. made that mistake before. <laughs> That's why right. this is um this is Deja. Hey Deja, she's look at I love how furry they are. So she hasn't been well, shorn she's in a halfway while. Halfway done. Yeah, they is actually, she molting? They they naturally shed. Mm -hmm. And what do you mean by she's halfway done? She needs more grooming. She but needs she, more, yeah. I mean, so you just but, brush it off. Yes, mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, we don't. Clip. Look at her. I love I how one. fuzzy she is. I like your she's ears the best. Yeah, she's a sweetie pie. She looks like a chinchilla. Look at the color <laughs> of that. It's so almost gray, right? Oh, hi. Hi, say hi. hi. you look so pretty. i like to meet you. And I like your nose. They're actually brother and sister. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that. Isn't that they're funny pretty. how their fur changes? Yeah. I mean, I guess we're different oh, from our siblings. Everyone is different. Isn't that cool? And that's Germany. I like Germany a lot. She, well, <laughs> you want to take her home? <laughs> I wish I could. I shouldn't say she that. trouble? She's a funny with attitude. She just <laughs> has a really bad attitude, and I might, I haven't decided yet, I might breed her to Biagio. Why do you have a bad attitude? Look how fluffy you are. It's like a fur coat. Yeah, she, well, she's, because she needs to be done. But look at her. It's so, it's so beautiful. Look at her. She's like a buffball. Oh my gosh, I love them. Are you still breeding uh, rabbits? How often Occasionally. do you? Occasionally. Mm -hmm. This is usually all like a picnic area. But yeah. We've got all our fleeces <gasps> out. We're sorting Whoa. them to get ready to make, um, to send out for roving and what we're going to use for yarn. So, so much <gasps> fiber. So we've got it protected with the plastic. Yeah. It's raining so much. Salsa. I love the names. Cricket, Rasta. So these are all bu Buja. So these are all one animal in a bag. Yes. yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Completely raw. One animal in a bag. Yes. And I know you lose a percentage of it with the cleaning. Yes. Yep. But yeah. But look at that. <gasps> look at that. That is so much fleece, you guys. Oprah. There's Oprah. <laughs> There's we Oprah, who we were just Oprah. talking about. We were talking about names. Oh my Oprah. goodness. Yeah, I always wanted to send you the real Oprah picture and say, I love you. Yeah. I love you. I know. Don't we miss Oprah? We do. Right, this is Bouja. Oh my goodness. Look at that. And it's it's got like a gray. Yes. And every hmm. year, their fleeces change. Isn't that interesting? Every year. You can't go back and expect the same animal to give you the same fleece. Now, will you sell bags of this at Rhinebeck too? Yes. yes. How will you decide which bags to sell? Well, that's what we're doing. We're going through. Yeah. It depends on... 
first we're going to probably decide what we're going to use for roving. Right. Um, and then it'll just be, you know, what do we want to save to use ourselves? And it's always hard. Yeah, because yeah, you're like, I like that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I want that. Yes. Now, can you dye this one? Or will yes. this always be natural? Yes. You will dye. She's got some, you, Brina's got over some dye. over dyes in there, I think. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I think so. Yeah. So, the categories are sell raw fleece, roving, spin into the yarn, and save for ourselves. Yeah. Those are the four <laughs> categories. Basically. Basically. <laughs> or finished product. Yeah. Or finished product. Finished oh product. my gosh, that's amazing. And I just want to say, Bougie's oh, yeah. name is, her mother is Coco. Mm -hmm. And so we were looking up things that had to do with chocolate. Oh. And we found an organic chocolate company. It was called like, yeah. Bougie Bougie Bougie. or something. Yeah, that's what that's, it is. It might not even be yeah. how they pronounce it. But. I love that. I love so. I love when people like put meaning into everything. It's great. <laughs> Look at how delightful this is. You just come out to the little farm. You can just be right here with all the animals. It's so beautiful. Not to brag, but and you're in a the lot woods. Times you get somebody that'll stop. They've never been here before. They stop for maple syrup or eggs, and they're like, "We don't want to leave." Yeah, we don't want to leave. Look at this. It's gorgeous. See you, Flo. <laughs> See you, Flo. When the dog gets walked, she goes. Yeah, really? The cat will yes. walk with us. I love her. It's nice and came over and. Hey guys. Out. Maybe if I get some grain. Hey, now is it true that the llama spitting is kind of a myth? Oh, it's not a myth. They do spit? They spit, but our llamas don't spit at people because they've been brought up in the right way. Right. Llamas spit as a form of, I'm the boss. They don't bite at each other. They don't kick at each other like horses, cows, other animals. Yeah. They spit at each other. I see. Um, and mostly it's over um, territory uh -huh. or feeding time. And, but, if, and that's why hand-fed animals in petting zoos get a bad reputation mm, because that's they're being set up. I see. That makes sense. And when we first started taking the animals to the fair, and my husband, you know, we'd sit and have a display booth and whatever and try to teach people about llamas. And you get these groups of teenage boys that come, oh, they spit, and my husband say, no, they don't, but I do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hi, it's okay. I'm not going to take it. Um, I heard someone else say that sometimes they communicate with each other. Maybe that's what you're talking about. And so if you happen to be in that line of fire, yeah, you'll yeah. get spit on. <laughs> yeah, and pregnant females spit at, um, like, the male to uh, ward him off and say, I'm already pregnant. Yeah, get away from me. Seriously. Yes. And that's how we used to I know to that do, feeling. We, we, yeah, we used to do pregnancy checks that way. And my husband would always put on a raincoat and whatever. Because you take the female in on a lead line into the male's pen. There's Rio. And that's the Rio, say hi. You can take a picture of him. Rio? Yeah, Rio. Hey, Rio. Oh, I love your color. He is um, part Surrey. Hi. Which is different from I love your color. Oh, hi. Yeah, get closer. Hi. He said, but I want to jump over every fence that I can. <laughs> Look, it's a little fiber shop. is from our animals. So this is what it will look like when we go to Rhinebeck. You'll have the roving. Yes. And here's the different colors. I love how it blends together to be all the different shades. Isn't that great? And you can get large quantities or smaller. Yes, absolutely. And here's the raw. Yes. Oh, and look at this one. What will this spin up to look like? You know, it I depends on how, how, yeah. how you spin, spin it, it, right? Yeah. Pies and, and stuff. Every yeah. every ball is different. Some some have more brown, some have more white. So it really just depends. And you guys make little salve too? Yes. And syrup. Is this your syrup or you mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Oh my goodness. And then this is a finished object, right? Yes. Is that what you were talking about? Tell me about mm -hmm. this. That is a Nuno Felton scarf and I used um some fleece from a ram that we no longer have, Morgan. You saw the blue and green on the outside. Wow, that's so pretty. And then just, and actually, I so did water lilies. I was experimenting <gasps> with um. So this is all felt fabrics. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it looks like a painting. Sabrina, that's gorgeous. Okay. How'd you learn how to do that? 
I learned how to felt from my friend Susanna White, uh -huh. who's also at the Rhinebeck show. Okay. She and her daughter Amelia do felting, and um, Susanna does puppets primarily now, and they do toys and, and like the felted. Yeah. I've seen those, One, like owls and stuff. I feel yeah, like I've seen those wonderful um, things. But she taught me how to felt, and I just took off from there. Oh, that's beautiful. I have uh, a couple little purses oh, left so that I cute. did. So, do you sell? What do you sell the most? When you go to Rhinebeck, what what moves Every the most? Every year's different. Every year's different. Every year's you can Isn't never gauge it. If I sell all the hats and whatever one year, and then I say, okay, I got to double up this year, I won't sell them. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll want funny. yarn, or they they'll want rough fleece. So years. these are some of the finished objects that would be there, right? Yes. Oh, yes. Isn't that Fairless interesting? Mittens and hats. Oh, so pretty. Oh, here's some little ornaments that you make. Yeah. So do you guys just have like a craft day every once in a while? How do you do it? Like what's your strategy? For Our plan oh. has always been to have a craft day. And every, yeah. every now and then they'll be like, you know what, we'll start this week. And then, but this know, year has been e extremely difficult because of the weather. So do you just uh, panic right before Rhinebeck and just work your tails off in October? Yeah. I've been trying, <laughs> I've been trying to spin a little bit almost at least every week, maybe yeah. not every day. Um, and then, you know, I was thinking yesterday, okay, August is half over. I know, right? <laughs> so September, I'm going to get really stressed. No <laughs> stress. She gets stressed. Yeah. Okay, I, I get stressed. so let's talk about what I'm seeing here because everything's a little different. Yes. Um, this section is the hand spun yarn. Okay. That has gorgeousness. That has the three kinds of fiber, the angora, the camelid, and the sheep's wool. Oh my gosh, look at this. So one of, a couple of them, like with this, a few are dyed and a few plies are not. Or are they all dyed? How does um, that it's, work? It's already dyed fiber. I, I dye the fiber and then, and then when I blend it, it blends in a certain, oh, it's you know. it's so good. I don't usually, I'm very, what's the word, am I eclectic? What am I? I just want to. Eclectic, yeah. Yeah, I, I like the nubs and bumps and mm -hmm. um, different you know, streaks of color. Mm -hmm. and it's, of it sounds like an organic process where you just kind of feel it. Yeah, yeah, you know? that's what it it's is. It's like an I, artist. I usually do it in my kitchen. I have a bag of this and a bag of this mm -hmm. and a bag of this mm -hmm. and I'm putting it on the thing. And yeah, and that's an over dye. Oh, wow. That, and I don't know, um, I don't remember what colors I used yeah. to over dye that, but that was an over dye. It was probably just like grays or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's over dye. Um, Okay, so these are all, so that's that one. And then what about these guys? These look different. This is a different process. Are these still hand spun? This is just, you know what? It's no. um, from a dip. no, it's um, it's from a different mill. Oh, I see. So the mill different. sends it back like this. And then Brina dyes it. I see. Yes. But you can see the different textures. Mm-hmm. You know, these two, this yeah. one is very different from this one. Mm-hmm. This almost looks hand spun. Yeah. And then, yeah it's very and curly. Yeah. That's so cool. And, and this one looks this, different too. This one was done at um, butter buckwheat. Buckwheat. Um, so it kind of depends on the mill. Yes. Oh, isn't that interesting? Yeah. And do you send them to different mills on purpose to get the different look? It, it or all just depends. It all, I my preference is I rather not have this. Um, what do you be, mean this? It do, to me it just doesn't have as much character as this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And as this, I, I like see. it. So you like it when it comes back. I mean, this yes. has this really special yes. texture, honestly, that I don't see a lot of places. Yes. Yeah. So you'll go to this mill. We like to. Right mm -hmm. now, they're not spinning outside mm -hmm. fleeces. Rats. Yeah. Because re we really yeah, we need to do to, another... We try um, to do local, but yeah. it doesn't always work either. Yeah, I understand. And not I mean, it's not only because we like the product that we get back, mm -hmm. but um, a lot of times it's the cost of the shipping. Yeah. I mean, shipping rough and, and, um, Zy, um, Brina, who do we, Frankenmuth. Frankenmuth, who does our big our balls of roving. Yeah. They used to come to Sheep and Wool mm -hmm. and pick up the fleeces there. Ah, that was nice. Now they don't. Mm hmm. So. Ah, uh, yeah, that is really special. Okay, what were you going to show me? Oh, yeah. This oh. is, um, this is the wool that she's carted up. So that I'm spinning right now. Oh, I see. Oh, see on this. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah, let's look at the before and after. So it looks like that, and then this is what we get. Oh, wow. And then will you dye this, or this will be sold as is? I'm going to sell that as is. So pretty. But see, you can also see 
this one has a little bit more white than yeah. that one. So it's it's all going to be different. And you can see, yeah. in, even in yep. the spin, like there's a little more white, there's a little more dark. Yep. And do you sit right here and do it, or you'll bring this I do it in the kitchen. Awesome. And if, I, if it's nice outside, I'll sit outside mm -hmm. with it, but I'll usually sit in the kitchen. Look at you. What else in here? What am I missing? There's some... We've got a few little um, little girls dresses. More that we oh, those are so cute. These remind me of little Austria pinafore yeah. dresses like your horse. Well, that was a pattern that I had done 40-some um, years ago yeah. for my two grown-up daughters. That's so cute. And um, I wanted to recreate it. That looks me. crocheted, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Wow, look at this little shop. I just love it. I hope you guys like the tour of Blackberry Hill Farm. Isn't it quaint? So if you're ever in the Hudson Valley, you should make a plan to come here and spend a day with the animals because they do offer that service among their gorgeous fiber that we just saw in their little shop. And if you're coming to the Rhinebeck uh, Sheep and Wool Festival, make sure you visit them. Tell them I sent you and get some of that gorgeous fiber to spin or to knit with or whatever. And now you've met the animals. Now you know. Maybe you have Oprah's yarn. <laughs> Bye. I was driving back from the farm and look, there's a little, little red shack of books. But I don't think it's open. I think it's only open Saturday and Sunday. But look how cute this is. Just had to get out and show you. For sale. Oh, Saturday and Sunday. We have this little. Oh, here's the self service section. New expanded. So cute. You see in there? Okay, a vinyl, a music room. I wonder when that's open.